Sunnism and Shiism are the two major branches of Islam. During the past years, many so-called takfiri groups have tried to create conflict between Sunnis and Shias by emphasizing on the differences between the two sects. I'm Ali Farnudi and in this episode of Iran Today, we're going to take a closer look at the relationship between the Sunnis and the Shias in Iran. Stay with us. Of 1.6 billion Muslims in the world are Sunnis, about 15% that make up somewhere between 165 and 190 million people are Shias. Most Shias believe in the rule of 12 leaders or Imams after the Prophet and the rest are comprised of many other groups. Shias make up the majority of the population of Iran, Iraq and Bahrain and they form a politically significant minority in Lebanon. Iran's population in contrast to the Muslim world has overwhelmingly more Shias than Sunnis. Between 90 and 95 percent of Iranians are Shias. با اینکه کشور ما ما میدونیم که کشور ایران اکثریت You know that the majority of the people in Iran are Shia Muslims, but the way Sunni Muslims are treated in this country is very interesting for the world. As you see, sectarian conflicts between Sunni and Shia Muslims are ripping apart some neighboring countries, but when it comes to Iran, you cannot find such a thing. In fact, no one has managed to sow discord between Sunni and Shia Muslims in Iran, and the solidarity and friendship between them have proved to be unbreakable. Our enemies across the world are trying to cause a rift between Sunni and Shia Muslims in this country, but they haven't been successful at all in this regard. In 2005, while under U.S. occupation, the Shia government of Iraq gained political majority. In some countries such as Iraq, Syria, Kuwait and Bahrain, it has become common for members of the two Muslim sects to intermarry and pray at the same mosque. Likewise, some Sunnis have complained of discrimination in the Shia-dominated provinces. As a person who has been in almost all regions where both Sunni and Shia Muslims live together, and as a person who is in touch with many Sunni intellectuals, I dare say that if the relationship between Sunni and Shia Muslims in all over the world was like that in Iran, the world would never witness such friction between them. A friction that in fact is a plot hatched by the enemies of Islam. Or if there was a friction, at least it would be very significant. As far as security issues are concerned, Sunni and Shia Muslims are living together without posing any threat to each other. That's why in other parts of the world, such level of security doesn't exist. The difference between Sunni and Shia occurred about 1400 years ago when Prophet Muhammad passed away. Prophet Muhammad's passing led to a dispute over his successor as the ruler of Muslims who had spread over various parts of the world. Over the years, Sunni-Shia relations has consisted of both cooperation and conflict. Both Sunnis and Shias share faith in the Quran and consider it to be divine. 
They perform very similar prayers, but they differ in the interpretation of Islamic law and some rituals. Although they follow Prophet Muhammad's sayings, they have different interpretations. Study of the two sects shows that the resemblances are far greater than the differences. Regarding the Islamic principles, Muslims hold the same beliefs. All of them worship the same God, Allah, that is monotheism. They follow the same Prophet, Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, that is prophecy. Muslims all believe that they will have a new life after their deaths. They believe in the same holy book, Quran. Muslims also respect other religions. Muslims all pray toward the same direction, called Qibla. Iran's policy is to encourage the peace between its Sunni and Shia citizens. At the beginning of the Islamic Revolution of Iran, the founder of the Islamic Republic of Iran, Imam Khomeini, designated a week between the 12th and the 17th of Rabiul Awal, the third month on the Arabic lunar calendar, as the Unity Week in Iran and in other parts of the world of Islam, as a symbol to unify and put aside dispute and tension between Shias and Sunnis. To clarify this matter, we've come to talk to the prayer leader at the Masjid al Raza Mosque, one of Tehran's famous mosques. The week of unity is a week of symbolic significance for Muslims. It was suggested by the Islamic Republic of Iran when Imam Khomeini was at the helm of the country. It was suggested to create a unity between Sunni and Shia Muslims. As you know, there is a disagreement between Sunni and Shia Muslims over the exact birthday of the Prophet. But during the week of unity, Muslims celebrate the whole week so as to resolve the disagreement. By celebrating a week, both Muslim branches can celebrate this event in unity without quarreling over the specific date. Several conferences are held annually in Iran with many Muslim scholars from inside and outside the country congregating to discuss Muslim unity and threat posed by sectarianism and the Takfiri groups against Muslim countries. There are a number of hadiths that go like this. Be happy when we are and be sad when we are. We believe that we must pay more attention to those ceremonies that bring forth joy and happiness to society. That's what Sunni Muslims also believe in. They also hold happy ceremonies. We take full advantages of this occasion to create a happy atmosphere among Muslim communities. Whether it is Islamic inter-parliamentary union meeting or any conferences in which top officials from different Muslim countries participate or Islamic unity conferences, all of them are totally beneficial as they make different orientations and sects close to each other in order to create solidarity among Muslim countries.
Nowadays, with the rise of ISIS in the West, Iran is trying to move beyond the Shia Sunni division and work towards creating a community that minimizes the conflict between the two main branches of Islam. As a country, Iran is made up of many different tribes with Islam as their major religion. We are a united nation with Sunni and Shia Muslims merged with each other. All ethnic groups in Iran, such as the Kurds, Turks, Fars, Baluch, Turkmen and Arabs, have merged with each other to form the Iranian nation. That's why we are insulated from civil disturbance unless you know where there are some extremist people on both sides who are after their own personal interests. They are not after the interest of Muslims. We must be totally aware of their actions. In order to reduce ethnic and sectarian sensitivity, there's no mention of religion, sect or ethnicity on the Iranian identity cards, identity documents or passports. As a result, nobody can tell which religion or ethnic group an Iranian belongs to. The constitutional law of the Islamic Republic of Iran recognizes Shia as the main branch of Islam in the country. It, however, does not hold any discrimination against Sunni Muslims. The law gives the Sunnis the right to solve family matters and issues regarding social conflicts by Sunni jurisprudence. According to the Iranian law, the Sunni Muslims are not a minority. They are Muslims and are recognized as ordinary normal citizens. According to the Constitution of the Islamic Republic of Iran, the followers of all religions are free to practice their own religion. This is written in the Constitution, and this is true in reality. However, in some small cities, there are some minor inconveniences for religious minorities, caused mainly by some people with provincial attitudes. But generally speaking, as the leaders of Iran put it, the system does its best to provide followers of all religion an opportunity to practice their own religion freely. This is also true about Sunni Muslims in Iran. This is the general status of religious freedom in Iran. As for the inconveniences in some cities, it can be resolved if the authorities admonish their own doers. Currently in the 9th Iranian parliament, there are 19 Sunni MPs from 7 different provinces. In the Assembly of Experts, which is responsible for appointing the leader, there are three members from Iranian Sunni clerics voted in by people from Sunni regions. There are no restrictions for the employment of Sunnis in government offices. In countries like Saudi Arabia, where Sunni Islam is the official branch of Islam, Shia minorities are deprived of many rights. But in Iran, you can see that though the Shia Islam is the official branch of Islam in the country, Sunni Muslims have almost the same rights as Shia Muslims have. Or for example in Bahrain, the majority of people are Shia Muslims but their rights are ignored and violated by the Bahraini government. Nevertheless, some people question the number of Sunnis in the employment of the government, given their population. As for government posts, Sunni Muslims expect to hold all kinds of posts, which is not possible right now. 
But this is an undeniable fact that they hold government posts in many different parts, if not in all parts. Recently, under the Rouhani administration, the mayor of Khaf has been appointed from among Sunni Muslims. Of course, the local people want the Sunni Muslims to be the governor of Khaf because more than 65% of the people in this city are Sunni Muslims. They like Sunni officials to be in all departments. What is clear is that the situation will be improved in the future. And this is just a matter of time, and Sony elites will be employed more than before in administrative posts. A deep concern of any minority in a country is the amount of resources and opportunities available to their community. The Sunnis in Iran can enjoy the same privileges as the Shias. As for economic areas, many things have been done. Some small cities, mostly populated by Sunni Muslims, have airports, a measurable facility by international standards. That's why some bigger cities populated by Shia Muslims have no airports. We believe that a prosperous and free Iran can be attainable through Islamic teachings. Currently, there are more than 14,000 Sunni mosques in the country and 37,000 Sunni prayer leaders and theological students are practicing Sunni traditions and prayers. Comparing the number of Shia mosques with Sunni mosques, for every two and a half thousand Shia mosques, there is one mosque for the Sunnis. Taking into account the population of the Sunnis in the country, there is a mosque for every 500 Sunni Muslims. The religious education in Iran is done by clerics in Sunni mosques or seminaries and so far we haven't seen any religious discrimination against us on behalf of the state. For example, at the moment in the Sistan and Baluchistan province in the southeast of Iran, with a high population of Sunni Muslims, there are around 5,000 mosques, 320 Sunni religious schools for men and women, 1300 maktabs or traditional schools with around 1200 Sunni teachers teaching a total of 22,000 male and female students. Before the Islamic Revolution of Iran in 1979, Sunni scholars would have to work as school caretakers to make a living, but today they enjoy high social status. It is worth mentioning that many villages have seminaries for Sunni Muslims and the students there are paid every month. After the revolution, a center was founded to give services to seminary students. The center does not discriminate between Sunni and Shia students at all. A major element of conflict in the Middle East can be traced back to the persistence of sectarian violence and power struggles among communities spreading from Pakistan in the east to Yemen in the south in the Middle East. The Bahraini uprising, the Iraq war and the Syrian war are examples of such friction. Meanwhile, Muslim scholars strongly state that the actions taken by the Takfiri groups are not the actions taken by a Muslim. Takfiris are a small group not approved by other religious sects. They consider themselves as Hanbali. Takfiris are not Hanbali. The leader of Iran, Ayatollah Ali Khamenei, has made it a priority for the Iranian government to attempt to reduce tensions between Shias and Sunnis. If Iran is not affected by sectarian conflicts that we see in the region, 
That's because of the solidarity between the people and the unity between Muslims of any sects. It's also because of a wise leader who has gathered Sunni and Shia Muslim together under the umbrella of unity and friendship. After all, we Muslims, whether Sunni or Shia, have the same prophet, the same holy book, the same holy place and the same articles of faith. That's why there is such a unity between Sunni and Shia Muslims. The Iranian leader Ayatollah Khamenei believes that since the victory of the Islamic Revolution in Iran, the US, the Zionist regime and the UK have created the Al-Qaeda and the ISIS in an attempt to generate conflict among Muslims and to stop Shias and Sunnis from focusing on their main enemy. Who supports Takfiri groups? As you know, Islamic community's major enemies are the United States, imperialist powers and Israel. Undoubtedly, Takfiri and extremist groups are approved and supported by these countries, especially by the United States and Israel. این روزها بر اونها ثابت شده که در جنگ نظامی Though they took advantage of a political vacuum in Iraq and occupied some cities in the country, they know that they cannot achieve a desirable result through military operations. Now, if the Iraqi government doesn't mount an all-out attack in Mosul, that's because it doesn't want to put the lives of the people who are mostly Sunni Muslims in danger. Otherwise, the whole country will be back to normal within a week. The enemy knows well that it cannot achieve its goal through military invasion, so it has shifted to cultural assault and a media war. Several satellite channels originating from the U.S. broadcast programs which are completely divisive. They insult and offend other Muslims, especially the Shia. The opposite also happened. It's clear how they are backed, which country supported them financially, where they are from, and how they distribute the budget. Muslim scholars and leaders pursue Islamic unity in the region. Iran endeavors to preserve the peace between its Sunni and Shia citizens and wishes to see an end to the war between the Sunnis and the Shias.